it's just fantasy, right? This is fantasy. It's a toxic fantasy where you don't have to do anything and like wallow in, in, oh my God, the past is gone and we can never blah, 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 blah. It, that is fucking g It's g I'm not sorry. <laughs> and it, the bottom line is. Yeah, <clears throat> especially you, you use a really great word there. Uh, you said about to escape. It's escapism, and it's not healthy escapism. Right? I get accused of creating things that are for escapism, and I do. I, I mean, I, my poetry, my fiction, my, the games that I make, everything that I make is a form of escapism. But I'm going to tell you, there's a difference between unhealthy escapism, which is not wanting to face reality and then there's uh, escapism which is what gets gets uh, accused of being the more degenerate kind but i'm going to push back and say the it's it's actually the opposite escapism for pleasure is more acceptable than uh escapism for cowardice yeah. if you don't want to face dude I use re the guys that are in the in the pulp sphere. We use our reality as uh, as inspiration to create escapism for people, so they could go like it's for pleasure. It's literally what is more wholesome than just like just enjoying. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's it's there are like healthy escapism is reading a story, reading a poem. Uh, listening to music, going into the woods and just like loafing out and just, like, listening to the creek and just like let your imagination go nuts and just be in nature's friend. You know what I mean? Just like going out and just like loafing and drinking beer, having conversation with your boys. You know what I mean? That is like healthy human escapism, right? This, because first of all, it's not constant. You go into this. You go into this, this this fantasy world, or this immersion, or this this place away from the place, and you're just there temporarily, right? It's like going to see a movie, or or listen to your favorite song, or whatever. You go there temporarily, and then you come back out, and you're like back to normal, right? It's kind of like uh, going on vacation, or having a recharge, or just going out to, to a fancy dinner with just you and you have a a, a date night with your wife, or whatever. Mm. It's just like a it's just like a little vacation. This stuff that the uh, that a lot of folks and I did this too, right? When I was was LARPing as a trad, and I'll fully say it, I was LARPing. When I was LARPing as a trad, you get it's this constant escapism, right? You are permanently in this stasis in your mind. It's this completely uh, cerebral, uh, like mind palace, I guess you could say. It's not like the the the, the thing, but you guys know what I'm talking about. They go to this place where. Uh, Okay, so uh, it's this fantasy, right? This is fantasy. It's a toxic fantasy where you don't have to do anything. It's this toxic fantasy where you're not obligated to do anything because everything sucks anyways. You might as well just like sit and whatever. And you you come up with with uh, you come up with arguments for yourself. You come up with with uh, lines of reasoning to why nothing will work. And why you shouldn't do anything, and why, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't mean doing something like going out and you know, because there's this, I, there's this like concept of uh, of doing that that um, I don't know. I don't want. I don't really. That's a whole other thing. We're running out of time, but it's just it's not healthy to have this this trad stasis because it is a, it is a place of stagnancy, it is a place of decay, it is a place. Where of self hate, where you don't take your own side, and the bottom line is that there are things of value, many things of value in our current time. There will we can make more things of value, and in fact, we are obligated to make things of value. And by not doing so, we are uh, we are spitting on the legacy of our ancestors by not continuing it. You know, I mean, I'm not. I don't want to <clears throat> hide in the cave and ride the fucking tiger. I don't want to be a man among the ruins and sit and sorrow and dwell and and like 
wallow in in oh my god the past is gone and we can never blah 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 it that is fucking g it's g i'm not sorry <laughs> and it's the bottom line is we can literally if you open a book if you open a book if you open a wikipedia page click modern art and you go look through or modern literature modern poet you go look modern stuff you will find a breadth, a cornucopia of beautiful, interesting, weird, cool things that are inspirational and mythopoetic and incredible. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of crap, but it's not all contemporary garbage like you see it. Like, uh, uh, what is that? New York Fifth Avenue fucking art expos where you got like a bunch of like f fanoics like piling up dirty carpets or like spraying spraying paint out of their buttholes onto some fucking pile of broken toasters or like whatever the fuck they're doing, whatever like bizarre, monstrous, retarded stuff that they're doing, that is not reflective on the last like hundred, hundred something years of brilliant men that have created things. So if, if you are, if you are one of these like static uh, statue respecting stasis, hibernation, self-hating fucking retard, Get rid of that. Stop that. Whatever you got to do, you know, get somebody punch you in the head, fucking go do some, go do some psychedelic mushrooms and go run around the woods naked and act like a fucking maniac. Whatever you got to do to shake that out of your dome, do it because you're holding the whole thing back. I'm yeah. sorry, but it's absolutely true. no, it, it, it is true. And it's like, in some sense, fetishizing tradition, like, look, okay. You and I are heathens, Dave, and the reason why paganism appeals to us, I think, on a, on a deep level, at least one of the reasons why it appeals to us is because we respect tradition, and we respect the originary tradition of our folk. This is not to disparage Christianity or anything else like that. This is only to say that you and I appreciate tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't, you know, this is not coming from a place of like fuck tradition and, and, you know, it's like old and stupid and I'm a progressive or n obviously, no. obviously that's not what we're saying. But at the same time, the fetishization of tradition, the museum tradition, wanting to put it in a glass case so that it never ever changes and evolves or, or like is it, that it's dead and it, it doesn't live anymore. Um, I think comes from a, a, the same place as over theorizing and, and, and the like too much theory uh, in our spheres, right? Where what it, what it means is because, you know, you, you've, you've got this doomed um, romantic, uh, you know, a crusade of, of reviving a tradition that will never be revived. And it, it, it's, it's doomed to failure, but it's, it's, a, it's like a beautiful corpse or whatever. Um, just means it, all it is, I think, is fundamentally it's an excuse to not have to fucking do anything, right? And that irritates me. It's the same thing as too much theory. It's an excuse not to have to put your shit on the line, put your name out there, maybe get in trouble, right? Like it, it's, it's, it's fundamentally cowardly. You're listening to an episode of the latest Culture Dads, Age of Sword and Cassette. If you like what you hear and want more, head on over to culturedads.com for podcasts every week. Or actually do work, like with your <laughs> hands. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and I think some of it's coming from that, that same place, right? And it, it's, it's not conscious. I'm not accusing anybody of, of, of like, you know, like actively LARPing or anything like that. But I think that subconsciously that's part of where it's coming from and here's the thing it's not even fucking traditional it's not even traditional you think of the most traditional people or like one of the most traditional peoples who's ever existed this would be the spartans these are peoples who um were were, were so traditional that they refused to reduce their laws to writing they would just you know perpetuate them orally because they believed that to reduce them to writing meant that they were somehow tainted and that whoever took them up was unworthy because it couldn't be trusted. Now, think of someone like the, the Spartans, this ultra-traditionalist people, and they had a saying, and the saying was, Sparta is yours, or 
you have received Sparta, adorn it. And what this means mm. is that it's your job to perpetuate the tradition is to take it and to move it forward by putting your little stone on top of the cairn. It's not supposed to be there in a glass case in a museum forever. Uh, they lived in their time. Uh, the um, Indo-European, the Proto-Indo-European, yeah, is Shredni Stog or Yemnaya man living on the steppe, perpetuating his ancestral worship, also um, was a man of his time as well. He lived in the Bronze Age, which was moderni modernity to him. And he was at the forefront of technical innovation in terms of metalworking, in terms of horse domestication. He didn't sort of like, you know, just wearily and, and, and saccharinely look to the past and say, oh, my, my ancestor, my, uh, you, you know, my um, shamanistic ancestor, uh, I have to do things exactly the same way that he did. I have to do exactly, I mean, the rites, of course, he had to perform exactly the same way. The worship, he had to perform the same way. But that didn't mean that he had to live in the past in terms of his, his you know, material subsistence or anything like that. He carried that fire forward into the future. And that's exactly the kind of thing that we need to do. And it's anti-traditional not to. And this is what I want to emphasize. All of the traditional uh, cultures in the world have had that same attitude. So if, if you really, really want to perpetuate tradition, you have to understand that it's something dynamic, it's something alive, it's something that changes. And something that changes with a core uh, that is perpetuated forever. But that doesn't mean that it's a husk, this dead husk. And I think that Modernism, to bring it back to the topic here, I think that what modernism is doing is it's essentially trying to revive the archaic worldview. Uh, it, it's obviously doing that in a, in a deeply subconscious way. But at the same time, it's sort of living more authentically in a kind of uh, traditionalist mode in that it accepts where it is. It accepts its thrownness into now. And that's exactly what every traditionalist has ever done. So... Yeah, I think that there's something to be said for modernism. I like a lot of modern art, a lot of art that's been created, let's just say, after 1900. I like a lot of it. I think a lot of it's based, it's a lot of it's shit, but there's a lot of really good stuff as well. Um, but more to the point, I think that the orientation, the philosophy, the worldview that it rests on is fundamentally sound, and I will defend it. You're listening to an episode of the latest Culture Dads, Age of Sword and Cassette where two dads discuss music, movies, art, and culture from a unique tribal perspective. If you like what you hear and you want more, head on over to culturedads.com for podcasts every week.